Okay. So um, for for my analysis, I'm not sure which one I'm going to wind up actually going with. Um, I'm not sure if the Paul Clay uh, Horizon Zenith in the Atmosphere um, painting is going to have enough substance. I think it does, though. Um, so basically, uh, this one has a couple of very simple elements, which is why I think it's going to make some kind of fascinating architecture. So um, it has, obviously, um, nodal points in the center that you see right here. Um, it has uh, radial projections, which is what he's kind of, you know, showing with that sunburst sort of effect here. Um, and it has two linear elements. One of the linear elements is sort of a boundary for the otherwise, um, you know, viewable as a void. Um, and then it sort of has a semicircular um, encapsulization of that particular center point um, radial element. Um, so whether or not I, I turn that into specific rules, um, I don't know how I would do it for specific rules yet. But um, let's do this. Get out Word. You guys have notebooks that you're doing this in. So um, first rule set is going to be um, nodal points with um, 360 radial projections. The, um, I'm also going to have semi-circular boundaries, and then I'm also going to have uh, linear, actually I'll call this semi-circular encapsule, encapsulizations, can you call it, is that actually a word? Encapsulizations. It is. There you go. Um, and then uh, I'll call it uh, linear blockages. Okay, so those are my three rules. Um, I just did that just by looking at it and observing some very simple but very apparent geometrical structural um, elements about the painting. Some of you have more, you know, like uh, larger structure sort of things, but really the first step for me is to identify um, where. I'm going to set my larger system. And since I have point-based, zone-based, and um, linear-based, you know, basically it's point line plane, um, I'm gonna start with my point-based system in order to generate my overall system. Okay, so that you guys have, you know, your, your primary systems, kind of like some of you have like X systems that are, you know, rotating. Some of you have square and circular systems that are, you know, overlapping and intersecting, mine's going to be point-based, and so I'm deciding to assign it to program. So here I am uh, in Rhino. Grid, hide, I hate the grid. Um, so I'm going to set up my site here, and that was 100 feet by 60 feet. Okay, go into my top view. Um, so really we have a couple of different types of program. We have... Um, yeah, I'll use points for it. We have three uh, main outdoor gathering spaces, and then we have four to six kind of smaller spaces. So here on uh, my first layer, I'm going to put a few points for the center point of my gathering space, wherever that's going to be. Okay, and this is the part where you as the designer have a lot of flexibility, particularly because you don't have uh, context around it yet. So I can essentially establish anywhere for that to actually be. So I'm going to put two of my... Um, primary um, gathering space is kind of weighted to one side because I noticed in the painting that it sort of has a weight to it down toward the bottom uh, with that hard urban edge. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Gary's uh, Disney Concert Hall, you'll be familiar with architecture getting bounded by an urban edge. Um, and then I'm going to put one outlier gathering space kind of over there. So uh, then I need to establish some of those smaller spaces. And on the next layer, I'm going to put uh, a few of those smaller spaces, um, the gathering spaces, um, are going to be, uh, let's see, if it's heavily weighted over here, I probably want to scatter them more around this with maybe a couple that relate to these. So I'm going to, you know, taper one smaller space um, into it right there, and then I'm going to scatter some between those three and then put um, probably two very close uh, to this one right there. Okay. So... I, right now, I'm just throwing them out there. I'm, I'm rolling the dice, and whatever comes up, comes up, okay? 
if you have a larger ordering system, right? So I mentioned that some of you have these X types of systems, um, like Eileen's system. She has like a, an, a, a, um, a right angle uh, X grid that has a slight offset. So hers might look something like this, where uh, basically she'll have a line like that, and then she'll have a secondary line like that, and then she'll copy that. Move it back into place actually. Copy that, put it on a different layer, and have it rotated something like five degrees, right? So that happens in a couple of different places. Her other secondary system is that she's working in triangles. So um, she might align one of these to um, a particular edge like that, and then start to, you know, kind of rotate that system out, extend, not extrude, extend to here, extend those, and then just start working with that system to get it to relate to the rest of the composition. Right, so that becomes your superstructure for the organization of all the rest of your geometry that's, that gets grafted in, right? Whatever your second rule set is, is gonna look something like that. But mine right now happens to be a, a set of points, okay? And I'll get to the rest of the geometry later, but let's talk about that radial element, right? Um, if the radial configuration is gonna um, relate to my space in some way, I'm gonna use it as uh, circulation you know, from, from, you know, gathering people in certain elements um, to get to my particular components. So clearly that's going to be a function of the main spaces. So I'm just going to use lines and I'm going to basically try to connect not only my primary spaces from one to another, but also I'm going to take um, the, that particular element and I'm going to find a few ways to connect them um, to and through other spaces as well, if I can. The only difference is I'm going to take the, the ones that connect to the small spaces and I'm going to extend those to the outer edge. And let's see, I'll take uh, this one, connect there. And you'll notice that I'm sort of, I'm weighting them so that they, they reach across the space. So I'm not necessarily going to do every single one. I'm just going to do ones that are going to create that that sort of net that I'm looking for. I think this one, in fact, is going to connect to everyone. So I'll extend this. There, 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 and there. And then I'll take another line system, and this one is just going to go to these four. So I'll put one here, there, oops. Okay, so that's one of my superstructure um, grid elements. Yeah, it's getting pretty crazy pretty fast, huh? Um, so the other, uh, the other rule set that I had, so that's, that basically covers my nodal points and my 360 radial projections. I have a series of other tools at my disposal, and uh, obviously it's gonna get really busy, and then it's going, I'm gonna have to basically start eliminating some of that busyness and, and making it an actual design. So moving on, I'm going to do some of those semicircular encapsulations. Um, that's going to be based on my um, more private spaces, the smaller gathering spaces. Um, they're going to be the ones that are approximately, um, what did I say, 400, 600 square feet, something like that. Um, which, if I draw a circle, that's, how long is that one? Uh, that's pretty small, actually. So. That's 489 at 12 and a half feet. So that's probably okay. So like a 25 foot diameter circle is going to get you about 500, uh, 500 feet. So um, anyway, we can work with that. 
So uh, with this one, they're semicircular, but I also just, you know, trying to capture the essence of the painting. The fact that it kind of bleeds out at the end doesn't really have that strong definition of where that edge is. I'm actually going to offset my, um, my line from the center point a little bit. It's just a gesture of irregularity. So I'll trim. There we go. Cool. Um, if you have the uh, center point on for something like this, you can use that to your advantage. So I'm actually going to copy that and put one of these around every single one of the, yeah, there we go. Um, also, I think I'm going to take this one and select those, those three primary circulation axes and put them on a separate layer so I can see them. There we go. Rotate. Um, one thing I am going to do with these spaces is I'm going to rotate them to be um, related to the outer edge in some way. So if they intersect the outer edge, they're actually going to intersect it at one point. Uh, actually, I want to do that from the other side. Intersect. And then if they don't, this is the only outlier, and so I'm going to face that one actually to the inside of the set. Okay. Starting to get somewhere. Sort of. So, um, uh, at this stage, I need to move on to my last rule set, and that's going to be um, my linear blockages. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to start to direct um, basically the, the flow of, you know, what's going to happen in the vertical plane. That's, that's me grafting it in. So I'm going to say linear blockages, vertical plane, um, dramatic changes. Layer five. Um, basically, uh, the way that I'm going to start to use these dramatic changes is I'm going to use uh, the conflict between the geometrical systems that I used for primary and secondary, and I'm just going to create an, a, a gesture of an architectural condition between them. So um, you might not understand what I mean, but I'm going to do this with a rectangular element, do it with a few of them that look kind of like this, and I'm just going to start moving them into places that have some conflict there. So this one I actually probably should exactly align here. Put it there. And also I will scale 1D on that and I'm going to pull it the whole length of that axis. Looks like I missed a little bit. Whoops. Maybe I didn't. Hmm, that's weird. Are you guys kind of um, understanding the general idea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. It's okay. So here we go. I'm going to keep working at this. I'm pro probably going to put like two or three more in here. It's so. a little more obvious than what you're looking for. Like, <laughs> you guys, I, I don't want you to get hung up on the uh, architecture yet. I want you to just think of it as a system and then let the system just kind of become whatever it needs to be. So we kind of just let, let this thing evolve into what it's going to be and then embed it. Pretty much, yeah. So now I'm, I'm kind of adapting this system to relate to the tangent points. Um, of these curves. I'm not sure what that's actually going to turn out to be later, but um, space up there at the top. yeah, that's okay. This can probably stretch beyond. There's no reason you can't just you know stretch systems and extend them. 
right? Because it's just a gesture of the original construct. And actually this one, now that I'm looking at it, I'm gonna take this and extend it all the way. Okay, so um, so what actually happens here, right? I said that the, the white ones um, are the major vertical um, articulations. I don't know what those are gonna be yet, but what I do know is that they're probably not going to be a direct translation on the ground plane and, and you know warping and stuff like that. So now I need to figure out you know which of these axes do I actually want to use and, and build the plane around. Um, but I do know that uh, obviously these are going to be primary. I noticed that uh, their particular axes are still weak because this one is really hard. So I'm actually going to extend um, this one to the edge. Uh, and that, that'll probably wind up being a primary axis. And then the other thing I want to do here is uh, start to enclose these a little more. So uh, can I go tangent? Yeah, tangent. There we go. I'm not going to enclose that one. Cool. Um, so everything that happens here in that center one, um, I need to think about those primary spaces a little more. So um, if I draw a circle here and I make it uh, feet area, that's 2,000. So scale that down. One, uh, sorry, scale that 0.5. It's funny. Wait, hang on. Did I do my area wrong before? Nope. Scale. Oh, that's right, because this is radial, so 0.75. There you go. That's about a thousand. It could probably go a little bit lower than that, but. Um, or you could just do the math. I was lazy. Uh, so anyway, this is approximately the size I'm going to have to design for. So that basically tells me that that whole space in there is actually going to be my primary space. So I can start to trim some of that out. Um, let me trim, probably take some of those out. Um, take that primary axis out. I'm going to keep that one. Actually, yeah, keep that one. Uh, approximately the same size in other locations over here. I'm going to need to um, open up this space a little bit, so I'll start to trim out some more of these elements. And I'll retain some of them um, in another form. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in the center there, but I do know that this is going to become another gathering space so I can start to trim out some information here as well. And it just becomes a bit of a, a, a growth and adaptation process from this point on. Um, you just need to start thinking about how you're defining the space, what it's becoming architecturally, and then you're going to start to work in the three-dimensional plane later on. So the axes can start to go away. I'm going to leave, no, not leave that. Get rid of those. Let's get rid of that. This one, I'm not quite sure what to do with that yet. So anyway, um, you don't have to get to a point where it's, it's fully um, developed or articulated yet. Um, what I would like to see is that you've probably done a few iterations of that subtractive process or, you know, whatever it becomes for you. Um, what I, the, the level of development that I want you to get to at the end of class today is that you have something that you can basically see as a vector composition has a relationship to your rule set. Okay, and then we'll start working on the three-dimensional plane in class on Thursday. Any questions? Was that helpful to see, that process? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing sort of a few iterations of that um, while you guys are working as well. I will check in with each one of you um, as we progress and, and hopefully we can close the book on it today. <laughs>